All right, so we want to figure out how to tell the story of a position time graph. We're not actually going to tell a story story, but we're going to uh, create a great description of a position time graph. We're going to use that description to help us create a velocity time graph and to create a motion map. So let's take a look. All right, so how do we tell the story of a position time graph? It focuses on three things, the position, the speed, and the direction. So first, what's the position? Where did it start? Where did it stop? This is a relative position. You don't need numbers on the graph. Did you start at the origin, above the origin in the positive direction, below the origin in the negative direction? Where did you start? Where did you stop? Position. Second, as I said, you need to talk about speed. Um, are you moving? All right, sorry, are you not moving, meaning you're at rest because you see no slope on the position time graph? Are you moving at a constant rate because you see a positive or a negative slope that stays the same? Are you speeding up because you see that your slope is gradually getting bigger? Or are you slowing down because you see your slope is gradually getting smaller? So we want to know about the position. We want to know about the speed. And finally, we need to talk about the direction. If you're moving, are you moving away from the origin? Or are you moving towards the origin? If you're moving away from the origin, are you moving in the positive direction or in the negative direction? So if you're moving toward the origin, are you moving in the positive direction or the negative direction? It might seem like a lot of things to talk about, but it's really not. You're just talking about position, speed, and direction. So let's try it out. So we have a sentence starter at the top in purple. It's a great sentence starter you can use every time. We have a position time graph right here. Uh, there's one type of motion happening. So let's, let's start to describe it. So using that sentence starter, starting at the origin, because the object started at the origin on the position time graph. Look at the slope. You see the slope is constant and positive. So starting at the origin, the object moves at a constant speed. And it's moving away from the origin in the positive direction. OK? Starting at the origin, the object moves at a constant speed constant rise over run, away from the origin in the positive direction. So we want to create a velocity time graph. Let's get a little more blunt about our velocity. Our velocity is constant. That means it doesn't change. Um, take that slope out. Um, and our velocity is positive, OK? So our velocity is constant and our velocity is positive. Well, let's make up a number. Let's say that the slope here was five meters per second. That means that every second along the path, the slope or the velocity is positive five meters per second, every second. So what does that look like? It looks like a velocity time graph like that. It's a horizontal line because the velocity at every second along the path is the same. Using that uh, made up number, uh, I'm trying to get this to be a little more horizontal. Using the made up number, we say five meters per second, five meters per second, five meters per second, five meters per second. It's the same the entire time. And that should be horizontal. I'm Having a hard time there. All right, so anyway, um, where does it matter that the velocity is here as opposed to here? No, we don't have any numbers. There's nothing to compare this motion to. We just know it's positive, so it could be anywhere in the positive range. If the velocity were zero, then it would be here on the time axis. If the velocity were negative, meaning it's going in the negative direction, then it would be somewhere in the negative range. But for here, it's positive, OK? If we want to do a motion map, we know, again, that we're moving at a constant speed. 
away from the origin. So I have vectors going away from the origin in the positive direction, and they're all the same length, so constant speed. Do I need to have all seven of these vectors? No. I could, I, if I'm not caring about numbers, I could have three vectors moving to the right, um, as long as I'm communicating that they're the same length, going the same direction. All right, now let's look at a second example here. This is a piecewise function. There are two motions happening here. So we know for the first motion, we already talked about that. Um, Starting at the origin, the object moves at a constant speed away from the origin in the positive direction. But what happens at part two? In part two, there's no slope. If there's no slope, that means the object's not moving. Okay? So let's translate this even more bluntly to velocity. That means that the velocity is zero. If the slope is in for, let me correct myself here. For part two, the velocity is zero. If the slope is zero, the velocity is zero. All right, so let's draw this here. We know that the first segment is going to look like this um, because that's what we did before. And we now know that the second segment is going to look like this. Okay, so you have a horizontal uh, a horizontal line uh, in the positive space, somewhere in the positive, doesn't matter where. You have a horizontal line at zero because it's not moving there. Okay, so what this is saying is that the object was moving in the positive direction and instantaneously it stopped moving. Okay, what does the motion map look like? Well, the object is, has th vectors moving to the right saying it's moving, and then it has dots being stacked, meaning that it's stopped. The position's not changing, okay? Um, whether you have three and three, four and four, five and five, it doesn't really matter as long as you know that roughly the same amount of time is used for the first segment as the second segment. It may not be exact, but I'm not paying attention to numbers. All right, so let's look at this last example. In this example, you have one type of motion, okay? You look at the slope, the slope starts steep, and it gets more shallow. In the shallow, in the shallow, I'm up the deep end, watch as I dive in. Congratulations, gentlemen. You are terrible. So this object starts at the origin. It starts fast because I have a steep slope, and it gradually slows down. And it's doing that while moving away from the origin. This is where it started. It's moving away from the origin in the positive direction. So what does that tell us more explicitly about velocity? The velocity starts positive, because we have a positive slope at the start, and the velocity ends at zero, because it, the slope becomes horizontal. There's no slope at the end. And the velocity gradually slows down in between. So let's draw this. It starts positive, and it makes it to zero. And that would represent a decreasing velocity. It's slowing down, which makes sense because this velocity value is getting smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. Okay. If we were to draw a motion map of this, it would look like this. Notice that you're starting with a big vector in the positive direction. That vector gets smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller until it comes to rest. Um, this maybe isn't necessarily quite right because we don't know. So I could, uh, I could make it more correct by deleting out some of those dots, actually, because it just moves and moves and moves and comes to a stop. 
Now, if it continued to be stopped, then we could put more dots. Okay. And that concludes our video.